Hello, my name is Trevor Smith. I am the Business Development Manager here at Pico Technology. And what we'll be talking about in this video is the Picoscope 6000E series PC-based oscilloscopes. These are high performance models, four and eight channels um, with mixed signal options of either eight or 16 digital channels. Um, they have a high speed USB 3 connection to the host computer. And a, an important feature that we'll be focused on here is the deep memory. So up to four giga samples of capture memory. So deep memory, um, what's it for and why do we want it? Well, you know, kind of a real world example that um, just to illustrate the point, if you think of Google Earth, um, it, it gives the appearance of being a, a single picture of, the, of a region of the, the globe. So we can look here at Europe. We can zoom in to a particular area of the continent. So we're a UK based company. So there's the uh, zoomed in area of the, the British Isles and zoom in even further. And we can look at our own facility here in St. Neots, Cambridgeshire, where we're based. Now, that, of course, is a very impressive, it gives the impression of a, a single image that was taken of, of the Earth that we were able to zoom in and in and in until we got to the level of detail that um, was, was what we wanted. But, of course, that's not actually the way it's done. The, 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 the Google Earth uh, system works with a system of stitched images that enable, using a post-processing system, enable users to zoom in on a level of detail that they want. Now, in um, typical electronics, that isn't the case. We've got um, very often the situation where we've got a, a single shot event, a uh, sequence of pulses in the case that I'm showing here. And we, we sometimes only get one shot at that event, but we nevertheless want to zoom in and in and in to see levels of detail that are really important to verify that the device that we're testing is performing correctly. So what I've got here is a, uh, a sequence of pulses and some sort of clock generator down here. And it's the, the block of pulses is operating over quite a long duration. So we can see here we've we've got a duration of let's have a look using the rulers here. So we've got yeah just under 100 milliseconds of um, of events that are going on in that um, blue block of, block of pulses just there. And let's just capture one of those. So I've got the software set to single mode. So we'll make one capture. And there it is. It's captured that event. And to begin with, I set the, the Picoscope up to, uh, to a relatively short uh, capture memory depth. So I've set it up with 100 kilosamples of capture memory, which is representative of many of the oscilloscopes that are on the market today. Um, they're, they're fitted with that sort of memory as standard. But what it means is at slow time basis, so we've got 20 milliseconds per division with just 100 kilosamples of capture memory to play with, it means that the sampling speed with which we captured that waveform was quite slow. It was uh, about 500 kilosamples per second. So the interval between each sample point was two microseconds, which if you're looking at the block as a whole, it doesn't really matter. You can see the extremities of the, of the block of pulses, um, no problem. But if you want to zoom in to look at the details of what's going on in each one of those pulses, you can see actually each one of those points on the screen now that we've zoomed in by 8,000 times, each one of those points on the display is a single sample point. When we're not really seeing the, um, the detail of the pulses that we might be interested in. So what I can do instead is apply, with the Picoscope, I can apply a deeper capture memory. I can, instead of 100, thousand points I can go up to well a million points or in fact we can go straight up to one giga samples and then take another capture on this occasion with a much deeper memory so there we are 
And this time, what's happened is with that deep capture memory, the giga sample, we've, we've been able to use the full speed of the analog to digital converter. So we've sampled this time at five giga samples per second uh, uh, sampling speed. So the, the interval between each sampling point now, is, instead of two microseconds, is, is 200 picoseconds. So this time, when we, when we zoom in on that waveform, we get a lot more information. We start to see uh, information about the, the rise time, overshoot, undershoot, if there was any, and that sort of thing. So we have, we're, we're able on a single shot event to capture um, an enormous amount of information that might be useful to us uh, in debugging that, um, that waveform. Another capability that we have that takes advantage of this deep um, memory is something called deep measure. So here we are, deep measure here on the display. So I, I call up deep measure and I, I get some settings. So create the deep measure. I want to make deep measurements in this case on channel A. I'm interested in that block of pulses that we looked at previously. I define where my cycle threshold is. So let's put that at, let's put it at three volts. That looks about right somewhere in the middle of the pulses. Um, the rise and fall time threshold, either 1080, sorry, either 1090 or 1080. I could give it a name if I wish to. And I want to display the cycles in the graph. So that's okay, so I can okay that and that. And deep measure now is at work analyzing every single one of those pulses that we started to look at in the, um, in the previous uh, area when, where we zoomed it. So with deep measure turned on, what it provides me with is a table of the results of all of the pulses that were captured in that block that we saw previously when we, when we zoomed in. So it gives me, for every single cycle in that block, it gives me the cycle number. So in this case, I can go from cycle one and right the way to the bottom, I can see that there are 8,146 pulses in total. And for every single one of those pulses, I can see the cycle time, the frequency, the reciprocal of the cycle time, the low pulse width, the high pulse width, the duty cycle, the rise time and fall time, the undershoot, overshoot, and so on. Now we can list them numerically in the order with which those pulses occurred, but we might be interested in seeing, well, what, what was the, the fastest cycle time out of all of those 8,000 odd pulses? So if I sort by cycle time, I can see that the, the fastest pulse in all of those um, 8,000 odd pulses was occurred at pulse number 816. The cycle time was 1.58965 microseconds. And of course I can do the, the opposite. I can find the slowest one right at the bottom. So pulse number 8,144 was the, the slowest pulse with, which was 768 microseconds wide. And if we go back to the fastest one, we can do it. We can of course do the, the same trick with all of those other parameters. So if it was eight, if it was cycle number 816 that I was interested in, if I double click on that pulse, the, the deep measure uh, function zooms in on that pulse and allows me e immediately to look at the characteristics of that pulse um, based on the, the parameters that we chose from the deep measure table. Now what you can do as well, of course, is to export that data so we can export the the information from um, fr from the, the deep measure table into a CSV file that could be then analyzed statistically offline to look at the characteristics of a, of a long duration test. So just switching back to the 
the presentation, um, we, we've looked at deep measure, or deep, what, sorry, deep memory. We've looked at deep measure for making millions, well, up to mi millions of measurements on a single waveform and, um, and analyzing those characteristics. And just to finish off the, the, the video here, there's a note here of the Picoscope 6000E portfolio. I mentioned that there are four and eight channel models with bandwidth ranging from 300 megahertz up to 500 megahertz, sampling speeds of five giga samples per second, um, either eight or flexible resolution, eight, 10 and 12 bit resolution, and this four giga samples of capture memory, depending on the model that you choose. All models have a 50 megahertz signal generator, and you can, add, by adding the TA369 digital pod, you can add either eight or 16 digital channels. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you would like any further information on the 6000E series uh, picoscopes, then visit our website, picotech.com, and we'll look forward to hearing from you and uh, seeing, seeing you at some point in the future.